All right, let's create our first animation that's not actually a built-in animation, but a custom one. And to get started with custom animations, we're just gonna create a very simple one in this lecture, which just moves around elements on the page. And in this case, we're gonna do that by changing the margin of the element so that it floats around the page. What you can also do is you can set the position to absolute and then use the left, top, right and bottom values to change the position of your element. That would also be possible. You could even use an animation like this to move around a player on the page in a simple game where you can control your player using the arrow keys on the keyboard. But for now we're just gonna use a very simple animation. So let's first go ahead and select the blue box. And then to create a custom animation, we're gonna call a function which is called animate. And the first perimeter that we have to pass in is an object. So we can create an object very easily in JavaScript by just using the curly braces. And then you can specify any values you wanna have in here. Now, if you're not familiar with JavaScript objects, you can basically think of this as a place where you can store key value pairs. So you can say margin left as the key, and then you can specify a value after a colon here. So let's say you want to have a margin left of 200 pixels after the animation has finished. And then that's already all that we're gonna use for now. You could also add the next entry by just putting a comma here and then changing something like a padding and then specifying a value again and so on. But we're not gonna do that in this lecture. We're just gonna use one CSS property, the margin left, to make our element move. Now be careful here to use strings on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side when using this kind of notation. And then we can go ahead and actually look at this in the browser. So let me quickly refresh this. And you can see that the blue box now moves to the right because the margin left goes from zero to 200 pixels. Now, of course, if you don't know what kind of margin you already have, then this is not really the best way to do it. So I'm gonna reveal a little trick here for you because you can also use plus equals 200 pixels here. So this will just increase whatever margin you already have by 200 pixels. And similarly, if you were to use minus equals, that would reduce the margin by 200 pixels. So let's go ahead and test this out as well. And you can see in this case, it performs the same kind of animation because the boxes don't have any margin to begin with. Now you can see that this is a pretty fast animation again. So also for the animate function, you can use the second perimeter to define the time. So this refers to one second again. So when we do that, we can see that the animation has become significantly slower. So if you think back, the default value is 400 milliseconds. So it now takes more than double the time as before. Now there's also one more perimeter here that you can use which defines well in which way this animation actually plays and in which way in this case the margin left is changed. So for example you could put in linear here so that the margin left changes linearly over the time of the animation. So let's say when we have plus equal 200 pixels over 1000 milliseconds then jQuery may go ahead and add one pixel every five milliseconds and that would be a linear scale. Now when you don't pass in a perimeter here, the default is usually swing. So let's check out the linear animation here in this case. You can see that the animation is, well, playing linearly. So jQuery just goes ahead and adds, for example, one pixel every five milliseconds. Now with other values as this third perimeter, you may have the animation speed up at the middle of the animation and slow down towards the end or speed up towards the end or something like this. There are different values which you can apply here. All right, great. So that's already your first custom animation. And as your next mini challenge, I would like you to move back the blue box to the position it was before after the animation here is finished. So I want that blue box to move back to the left and be at the position that it was before. 
Now in this case, the margin left is zero. So you could just move it back to margin left zero pixels, but I encourage you to try to use this notation so that if you were to change the CSS and add some margin left to the boxes, your animation would still be perfectly fine because you're actually just adding 200 pixels and then removing 200 pixels again so that your JavaScript code here is decoupled from your CSS code as it should be. All right, so that's already all for this lecture. I encourage you to try out the mini challenge and you can already also try out different values here. You can basically change any CSS property you want except for some colors or something like this that jQuery cannot uh, gradually change so easily. Or you could also just follow along the next couple of lectures where you're gonna learn how to use more advanced custom animations. So again, thank you so much for spending the time in this course. I hope you're really enjoying it. If there's anything we can improve, just let us know in the discussions. And otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.